This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? He says, Piyosa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, it's just like you said. Jar Jar is the key. Well, he literally was a key made out of petrified bantha poodoo. How oh, we change that in the rewrites? I wish you could be here to tuck me into bed. Oh, I know, sweetie, but I'm on set ruining something. Can you read me a bedtime story? Oh, boy. Do I have the perfect one for you? Not the one with the duck. Oh, well, how about... Not the one with the Wookiee porn. But I had a trilogy based around that. Daddy. Revenge of the Tits, The Condom Menace, and Chewie Does Dallas. Daddy. Oh, all right. Uh, wait, I've got one about a fairy princess. Oh, that sounds nice. And it's based on a Midsummer Night's Dream. I don't know what that is. Even if you did, you wouldn't recognize any of it. Oh. It's called... Red Tails. <laughs> Oh, strange magic. That makes a lot more sense. Based on a concept 15 years in development, Lucas said he wanted to make a story for his daughters. Figuring he did such a good job making a fantasy for 12-year-old boys, he could make a fantasy for 12-year-old girls. Cause yeah, he understands the female mind just as much as the male mind. You're so beautiful. It's only because I'm so in love. No, it's because I'm so in love with you. So love has blinded you? What the fuck? There's a couple interesting notes about this production. One is it was the first Lucasfilm production to be distributed by Disney. Talk about a great start. Another is it's the only Lucasfilm animation that has nothing to do with Star Wars or Indiana Jones. I'm just gonna jump the gun and say it's the last one too. And finally, it was directed by a man who made his living in sound design. Actually, he's a little bit of a legend in that department. Remember this sound? He made that. How about this classic? Also him. Can't forget this one. Yeah, this guy pretty much gave you the Foley soundtrack of your childhood. And when it came to animation, he directed... a short. Give him a movie! Honestly, when you consider it's from a guy whose ideas have become poison, a company in the middle of a transition, and a director who had never done an animated film in his life, it's kind of amazing this film is as coherent as it is. That is to say, not very, but it's still better than the assumed none at all. So, is it warranting of all the rotten scores and such lack of interest there's not even a Blu-ray release of it? Well, let's take a closer look to find out. This is- Wait, you're in my daddy's bedtime story? I had a day to write this. I can't be interwoven into everything. Understood. Let's take a look at Strange Magic. It opens with two magic lands, Fairy Kingdom and Dark Forest. Tolkien, you're a linguist for nothing against Lucas originality. And big surprise, the two sides don't get along. We'll get to that in a little bit as our main character, Princess Marianne, voiced by Evan Rachel Wood, who I guess has a history of fighting off dark things is super happy because she's about to be married. And I gotta say, for 2008, this is actually pretty good animation. Oh, it's 2015? Yeah, this sucks. Okay, don't get me wrong, the textures are pretty good, and some of the movements can be very elegant or very funny, but look at these faces. They look like the recycling bin of Mars Needs Moms. They're so weirdly designed, I keep expecting Shrek and Fiona to trap them in jars for a throwaway joke. They don't even look like main characters. But who needs great when you can be confused for characters from Epic? How about a princess that can do this? Who's the big girl? You got a sword, yep. She's marrying a knight named Roland, played by Sam Palladio, who I swear is Prince Charming with a shrink wrap face. Seriously, everybody in this looks like a Shrek coloring book. Because when I rule this kingdom, I'll go into that dark forest to talk to them. To have fun, to see things, to have adventures. Not enough governments have policies that are adventure-based, though maybe they just occur naturally. Marianne's sister Dawn tries to prepare her for the wedding, but she. You can't help. Oh, did I forget to mention this is a jukebox musical? I can't help it. He came up with that choice the same day he wrote the What a Drag line, didn't he? 
Okay, so a lot of you probably know I'm not the biggest fan of jukebox musicals, but even I can acknowledge there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. The songs have to further something. They have to give the story even more meaning. In this, you could completely cut them out and miss nothing. They're all just pop love songs. And what do most pop love songs have to say? Love is awesome. The end. Nothing is sung that couldn't be summed up in one sentence. In fact, I'm kind of fascinated how they came to the conclusion this should be a jukebox musical. Daddy, you've been talking for 10 minutes and nothing has happened yet. Um... Pop love song, pop love song. <laughs> I love this song. This story is good now. It's bouncy and nice and will shut you up for a minute. George, you master. So crazy, got me looking so crazy in love. God, this is cheesy and so behind the times. I keep expecting her to be pushed down a well and come out the other end as Amy Adams. Gotta give it to him though, this shot's pretty cool. Take my home. Take my home. Whoa, did I just break the matrix? Marianne discovers though that Roland is cheating on her in the open on his wedding day. Seriously, you couldn't hold off a little bit? And she's naturally heartbroken. Do you want to make a dead man? What do you get when you kiss a boy? Okay, someone made a mixtape first and then wrote a story around it. This is Walmart Fantasia. I made it so when the music starts, you'll accidentally bump into Hadrian. Ladies and gentlemen, George Lopez in the Deep Roy story! Actually, this is Sonny, voiced by Elijah Kelly, who seems to have the hots for Dawn, even though he's never confessed it. She's always hovering, <laughs> watching, worried. What's she trying to protect me from? You can take care of yourself. Yeah. Mm hmm how long until she gets kidnapped? Okay. What if he doesn't like me? Don't worry. Maybe he thinks I'm too perky. Bad thing. Oh my god, a minute and a half ago we wrapped up the previous song. No, excuse me, songs! There were two in a row, and they're literally starting another one! Christ, how insecure are you about your story that you have to play three pop songs back to back? Daddy, I do not care about the taxation of the goblin separatists. Uh... Dance to this bluff, this bluff is nice. <laughs> oh, I'll fall for this again. It has a nice beat and means nothing. Sonny is interrupted by a lizard. Yeah, you sure he doesn't have a song in him? If I'm gonna eat somebody. But Marianne flies in to save the day because she is a completely different character now. No, seriously, remember how she was all lubby-dubby and clumsy and couldn't even hold a sword? The kind of rom-com character even Bridget Jones would be laughing at? Now she's Michelle Rodriguez, always ready for action and holds a sword like it's Nerf fencing. We gotta get home! You're looking at it! Look, I get the idea that her heart is broken so she toughens up, but this all happens through such a short song number and it's not made clear how much time has passed. Honestly, it's shot like it's all the same day. There's no cuts to night, or the weather changing, or the location changing. Half of them even wear the same clothes. It'd be like if Sarah Connor as a waitress saw the Terminator once and became G.I. Jane two minutes later. Or if someone went from emotionally bland to killing younglings, you knew I was heading in that direction. <laughs> Marianne defeats the lizard in a pretty funny way. <laughs> I can't help it, I'm a sucker for that cliche. And Dawn reminds her they're going to be late for the spring ball. Smile, my dear. <laughs> a real smile. This is one of my better ones. You know, this animation's not scary, but it's just exaggerated enough to be disturbing. Roland approaches Marianne, and in hindsight, I really should have seen the song coming. Come on, Marianne. No matter what people say, it did. How much Shrek are they going to rip off? You got a lot of nerve walking in here. I think you got the best of me. Okay, did Lucas want to make an opera? How many songs are there back to back? Here I am. Oh, there you go. On my knees again. On your knees again. Are we not saying phrasing anymore? If you didn't want me to take that lyric that way, you wouldn't have had her roll her eyes in that moment. That's on you. Roland sees Sonny has a crush on Dawn, so he convinces him to get a love potion from the Dark Forest so both of them can use it on who they desire. A small thing. Well, the 60s were fun, but now I'm paying for it. Word gets to the Bog King, voiced by Alan Cumming, who naturally has a song to sing about it. And I don't know why, but this part cracks me up. Take a look at this face. 
I know why your name's coming, because every scene with you is a climax. Hi, I'm trying to be that thing from Ice Age, but I'm more the possum from Over the Hedge. You forgot there was a possum in Over the Hedge? Well, then we share the same legacy. Pinky Jack Skellington says it can take Sunny to the Sugar Plum Fairy who creates the love potions he's searching for. Meanwhile, Marianne continues being the badass with the sword she always never was. Time to busy. <gasps> I deserve that one. Oh, here's the problem. I had a goddamn blindfold on. With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? Sorry, I had a two for one on those jokes. Maybe she got out more often. Let it go, Dad. Let it go. Let it you know if Disney got to them faster, that would be in this movie. Alfred Molina plays the king, looking weirdly like Lucas if he ate Zelda's CDI animations, which is nothing compared to the little too happy reaction Marianne has to his hugs. <sighs> Are there any jokes I can make that won't get me flagged on YouTube? Judges say! That's fair. Sonny makes his way to the Sugar Plum Fairy, voiced by Kristen movies are what I do when I'm not acting Chenoweth, who's trapped inside Shelob's clitoris. Love is strange. Now's not the time for a concert. One third in and now we're concluding that? Hey, 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 we had a deal. You never play that again, and that was the deal. But don't worry, things get even crazier when the Bog King's mother tries to set him up with somebody. <laughs> There's a line from Hook that I think sums up moments like this. Where all the jagged parts of my life have, have come together to form a complete and mystical hell. But it's way too optimistic. The potion is made and Sunny sets free Casper the obnoxious sperm, but she quickly gets recaptured, allowing Sunny to escape. He makes his way that night to the spring dance. They literally just had a spring ball. This film is the dory of narrative memory loss. But Dawn accidentally gets sprayed with the love potion just as the Bog King kidnaps her. I love how many times it looks like the father is about to fly into action, but it's like he realizes he's too heavy for his wings to carry him. Oh, it's like doing a push-up. Simply impossible. Bog wants the potion returned because he hates love so much he wants nobody to take part in it. Wonder what the moral's gonna be. Return the love potion by moon down, or you'll never see your sister again. I swear by my face! By moon down, but all of you will be next! I'm so angry I will only perform one solo, but not two! I'm saving that for when I sing how much I hate songs! I'll rescue her. No. I'm the only one who can. Why? Huh? Why is she the only one who can rescue her? There's like tons of other options. Honey, you're just not familiar with my style of storytelling. Which is? Characters do things because I want them to. Well, I want them to turn into interesting people. Doesn't work that way. Why not? Because you didn't make Star Wars. Is that the only reason people make things for you? Yeah. Okay. Now, where was I in the story? I don't know, but it's doing a good job of putting me to sleep. I've been given that compliment a lot. Hello, I'm Dr. Frankenstein. I don't know. We all hate going to the post office, don't we? That's why I recommend mailing and shipping online at stamps.com. Stamps.com allows you to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay a lot less with discounted rates from USPS, UPS, and more. It ties in greatly with a person doing mad experiments. In a way, I feel like I don't have to explain. But it does a great job at saving thousands of hours and money for tons of businesses. With Stamps.com, you get the services of the post office and UPS all in one place. Plus big discounts on mailing and shipping rates. Stamps.com brings the services of the US Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It's alive! Like Stamps.com is alive! 
Stamps.com is a no-brainer for any business. Oh, brains! Yes, I put a brain in a monster! That connects! Whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out orders, or even a giant warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official US postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's that simple. Perhaps I should have thought a little harder before I just grabbed a lab code and said this'll connect to stamp somehow, I'll figure it out. But they have great discounts! You know, saving money, I had to buy all that stuff out! That's, that's really there! With Stamps.com, you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention Stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. It's no wonder nearly one million small businesses already use Stamps.com. I want to suck your blood! No, that's a different one. Uh, hello, Clarice! No, that's... I don't know where I pulled that one from. Uh, let's talk about the special deal that Dr. Frankenstein has for you. I'm sorry about this. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code, Nostalgia, you'll get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia. That's stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia for your special offer today. Stamps.com, Dr. Frankenstein says never go to the post office again! This worked out great. Hey folks, guess what? I'm finally gonna start playing Kingdom Hearts on Twitch. A lot of people have been asking me to play it. I'm finally gonna do it for Disney December, and you can tune in and watch it from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can also see us other times six days a week. Hope to see you there. When the Bog King gets to his castle, he looks at Dawn, who instantly falls in love with him because of the Stockholm. I mean the potion. Sugar pie, honey bunch. What? I will say the Bog King does surprisingly become kind of funny from here on out. Because he was played as such a standard intimidating threat throughout half the film, the sudden switch he has with being constantly confused and even afraid at times does get a few chuckles. Have you not seen my face? Sonny and his friend tried to get the potion back from Gizmo's drunk uncle, but that doesn't turn out as well as they like. I mean, this is eerily identical to how it's been my Tuesdays, but I barely know you! Crackhead Bartok decides to help him out, though, once he's snatched up by a lizard. Hand it over! Huh. Oh yeah, sure, go ahead and think. I'll just wait for you at the other end of the lizard. That's a good line. It's like the Easter Bunny. I'll acknowledge when I actually see one. Yeah, come on, we gotta eat something along the way. They stumble across Roland's army and tell him they used the potion on the lizard to make it obey. She fell in love with me. Me too. Is that wrong? If it's in this movie, just assume yes. They team up marching to the castle, but Marianne gets there long before them. Now I know. <laughs> no, you don't stand a chance. Face like an angel. I'll also admit the film gets a little interesting when these two are together, as they both ironically fall in love, bonding over their sheer hatred of love. I can't help it, I find that a little funny. You know that I love you? Yes. Antidote? Working on it. I know she's a girl who falls in love with every guy she sees, but this! I mean, I knew I looked like I should be hunting the Justice League, but to some villains on the tick, I'm quite the looker! It doesn't help that the Bog's mother also sees their chemistry and tries to set them up. Tonight's gonna be a good night. I thought we agreed we only bring that song up to ruin Super Bowls. Fire! News from the mushroom! Mario the Destructor has come! The end is nigh! And I will reveal the antidote with a story. What? 
What? <gasps> no! It's revealed that the Bog King, much like Marianne, was jilted by a breakup when he fell in love with an overcooked Miss Piggy and even with the potion, she rejected him. But the fairy says the potion didn't work because she was in love with someone else. The one thing more powerful than the potion is real love? Bingo! Now when you say real love, they fly for really no reason but to sing a love song, and honestly, I have to admit, the chemistry between these two isn't that bad. When the movie stops doing bad jokes and bad songs, the moment these two share are surprisingly kind of charming and even relatable. Even the way their scenes are filmed and cut is a lot slower, allowing what they're saying and even what they're singing to actually leave an impression. Imagine, something this movie will remember and actually want to remember. But Roland arrives, and of course, we have the third act breakup. Jesus, right after the third act? Oh, this was even a possibility? You wouldn't want to see what I do. I won't let that happen. <laughs> Shit! I'm letting that happen! When Boggs sees Roland wants to use the potion on Marianne, he fights back, resulting in a battle tearing down the castle. My life's flashing before my eyes! Hey, I used to be hot! <laughs> but Roland sprays the potion on Marianne. Yeah, I wonder what's gonna happen too. Sugar pie! Huh, that punch kind of reminded me of Frozen. But that was about two princesses, one extrovert, one introvert, going on a journey to save the other, but are interrupted by a surprise villain fiancé who wants to be king. Shrek and this. Okay, I talked myself into it. I've learned a valuable lesson. No. Never judge something, or someone, by how it, or he, or she, looks. Set in a film where all the women are friggin' gorgeous. Leia and Jabba was a love story. That's my idea for Star Wars Episode 7. Oh my god, that's so boring. I can't follow any of this. Daddy? Could you never read me that story ever again? As you wish. Do you ever do anything original? Hey, if it's not broke. Uh... It. Uh, yeah, that's it. Strange Magic is not a god-awful movie, it's just your standard bad. The plot is too complicated for any kid to follow, but not in a fun way like Midsummer Night's Dream. The jokes are pretty weak, and the animation looks like a mix of all the lesser elements from more successful animated films. With that said, it can get a giggle here and there, and there's an occasional moment of inspiration, whether it's from a charismatic couple, a decent line, or an inventive transition. But the final result is still very underwhelming, with songs that don't need to be in the movie, personalities that jump around with little to no flow, and ideas that have been done in movies like Shrek Frozen and even Mastermind, just not as clever or poignant. This is nowhere near Lucas's worst stuff, but it doesn't leave that much of an impression. Not a disaster, but nothing that memorable either. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remit. Hey, wait a minute. Next month is March. You know what that means! TERMINATOR MONTH! Wait, is it too late to change it to term monthnator? Aw, oh, dick biscuits. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, once again, this was a recommended charity. Thank you all so much again for uh, these recommended charities. It's just really warms my heart seeing how many people have charities to recommend. So thank you so much again for that. Uh, this one is called Project Night Night. Uh, their mission is to provide free night night packages to homeless children from birth to preteen who need childhood essentials. Uh, these children need to have a concrete and predictable source of security and increased exposure to high quality literacy material materials uh, during this time of upheaval. Each night-night package contains a new security blanket, an age-appropriate children's book, and a stuffed animal, all nestled inside a new canvas tote bag. Uh, Project Night Night works with tens of thousands of individuals each year who volunteer their time and talents to make a world a better place. Voted the best children's charity by San Francisco Magazine, Project Night Night has emerged as a leading provider of nighttime comforts 
for homeless children. So as you can see, this is a really good, uh, kind organization doing something that's uh, just you know, it really needed and, and really draws attention to, you know, a major problem here. So definitely check them out. Uh, go to the link. See if you can donate. If you can't donate, maybe volunteer. As you can see, they have tons of volunteers there. And if not, spread the word. Just the more we can get. As I say in all of these, I know I'm, I'm like a broken record, but I, I really stand by it's so true. Just the more attention we can get on these people that do good, the more good will spread. So thank you so much and take care.